All right, let's go ahead and find the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence for this power series. So we're going to be using the ratio test because it's a, it's a quick way of really finding the uh, interval of convergence. You could use the root test, but a ratio test is uh, what I prefer to do. So I'm gonna go with that. So the ratio test tells us to take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus one over a sub n. That's what the ratio test tells us to do. So let's figure out what is our a sub n plus one term is. So that's really plugging in n plus one everywhere. There is n in the formula. So here, 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 here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So you'll have negative one to the power n plus one plus one. So that's really just n plus two. And then you'll have x plus two to the power n plus one over n plus one times two to the power n plus one. That's your n plus one term. So let's substitute that in our ratio test formula. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus one. So that's negative one to the power n plus two times x plus two to the power n plus one divided by n plus one times two to the n plus one. Now dividing it by a sub n, which is really this formula right here, same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So this will be n times two to the n over uh, negative one to the n plus one times x plus two to the n. So that's multiplying by its reciprocal. Now we do a lot of simplification before we can take the limit. So this guy right here, I'm gonna rewrite it. So you can um, rewrite it in the following way. So you have the limit as n approaches infinity. Now when you take the absolute value of this one right here and this one right here, they're gonna disappear because it's just negative one to some power. Absolute value will throw them out. So we can ignore them. So now x plus two to the power n plus one, I can write that as x plus two to the power n times x plus two to the power one. By laws of exponents, you can put them together. And then on the numerator, I still have n times two to the n all over. Now here in the denominator, I have n plus one times, now I'm gonna rewrite this guy right here. Two to the n plus one can be written as two to the n times two to the one. Then I still have x plus two to the power n, everything in absolute value. Well, now we do some simplification. So check this out. Uh, so this one right here, this will cancel with that. And then two to the n, two to the n, they also cancel out. So what we're left with is the following. We have the limit as n approaches infinity of, so on the numerator, we have n times x plus two to the one power. And on the denominator, you have n plus one times two. All right, so now let's separate. Since the limit only belongs to n, we can separate this. And we can also drop the absolute value for the n variable since n goes to infinity, everything will be positive for the n variable anyway. So you have the limit as n approaches infinity of n times n plus one times two, I'm gonna put that on the front, times in absolute value, x plus two. Now this limit right here, this limit is since they have same degree top and bottom, you know that the limit as n goes to infinity, it's gonna be the ratio of their leading coefficients. So this limit is gonna be one over two. So this is the coefficient one, this is the coefficient two, it's gonna be their ratio, one over two, times x plus two. Now, if we want convergence in the ratio test, we want this to be less than one. Because we know that in the ratio test, as long as that limit of the ratio of a sub n plus one divided by a sub n has to be less than one for it to converge, this one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and now we can solve for the interval of convergence. So multiply both sides by two. So you have absolute value of x plus two is less than two. So then if you separate this using the absolute value, you will have x plus two is bounded between negative two and two. That's how we remove the absolute value. And now we can add, uh, subtract two from both sides. I mean, all sides, not two sides, all sides. That will give you a negative four is less than X is less than zero. So there you have the interval of convergence.
Now we do need to do a little bit of work from here. We need to check the endpoints because sometimes you might have convergence at the endpoints. We need to check that. So I'm gonna do that a little bit later, but here, this piece right here, this also gives you the radius of convergence. So here, if you were to draw this uh, on the real line, so we know that this series is centered at negative two. So you go two units to the right, so that's gonna be right here, and two units to the left, negative four. So the radius of convergence is this one. So this is your radius of convergence. So R, it's going to be two. So we figured out the radius of convergence uh, from picture or just book and looking at this inequality. Now let's go ahead and test the endpoints so we can confirm which endpoints are included, if, if any. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, test each endpoint. So for x equals negative four, our series will become the sum from n equals, going back to the original. So I'm going to just drop down the original on the bottom so we have it next to it. So you're always plugging in the endpoint back to your original series. So I'll put it right there so we can see it. n equals 1 to infinity, plugging in x equal negative 4. So you have negative 1 to the power negative uh, 1 to the power n plus 1 times when x is negative 4. So I'm plugging it in right here. So I'm going to have negative 4 plus 2. That's negative 2 to the power n over n times two to the n. All right, so what's going on here? So if you um, uh, rewrite this expression, so the nominator, I can rewrite a little bit more before I can decide if this particular series will converge or diverge. So we can write it like this. So we have negative one to the n times negative one to the one power times negative one to the n times two to the n. So I just rewrote that guy right there. So then these, you can combine them. So that's really going to be, um, so let's rewrite the denominator as well. So you're going to have the sum from uh, n equals one to infinity. So negative one to the n, negative one to the n, that's negative one to the two n, n plus one, that's two n. So that, that will make the negative disappear and you have one to the power n. So all of this is really just one. This is one. So I can actually ignore that. So hopefully you see that those guys disappear. Now here you have negative one to the one power. Anything to the one power is always itself. So what we, what we can say is that this is gonna be just uh, negative one times, then here I have two to the n and two to the n. Now these guys right here, they also cancel out just two to the end. So like this. So what I have is negative one over n. Now this is your harmonic series, but the gets multiplied by negative one. So this series diverges. So it's the negative harmonic. So this diverges. So what that means is this endpoint is not included. There's no convergence at the endpoint, negative four. Now let's go ahead and um, figure out the next endpoint at x equals, uh, the next one we're testing is zero. So we're gonna plug in zero into our series and see if there's any convergence at that endpoint. So I'm just gonna pull this down here so we don't have to keep referring back and forth. Plugging in zero, so you'll have the sum starting at n equals zero, uh, n equals one to infinity of negative one to the power n plus one. So x is zero, so you'll just have two to the n over n times two to the n. So the two to the n here, these guys will cancel out. So this series turn into the following, starting from one to infinity, negative one to the n plus one over n. Now this is your alternating harmonic series. And we know by the alternating series test, this converges. So this converges by the alternating series test. So therefore this endpoint is included. So this is included. 
So what that means is that our interval of convergence of for this series is going to be, so let's call it interval of convergence. It's going to be negative 4 to 0, the 0 is included. So that would be the interval of convergence. And we saw the radius of convergence that was r equals 2. All right, so I hope this helped. Take care.